everybody, welcome back to our channel or welcome for the first time. My name is Juan and here at Ethereal Art Studio, I'm an artist, you're an artist, we are all artists. Today I'm going to show you how I painted this acrylic homage to the 1954 original classic Gojira. So I'm going to show you step by step, but before we do that I want you to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification button so you stay up to date with our latest time lapses and tutorials like this one. So all I'm going to use is a few brushes here. I'm also going to use the colors white and black. That's it. And here I have a crumbled up piece of newspaper. We're going to be using that as well. So my canvas is uh, 12 by 16, but any canvas will do. So here I'm trying to see where I'm going to place Godzilla in proportion to the rest of the canvas. So I wet the brush. I dry it really well. And this brush is uh, about a uh, half inch. And I'm going to use this to start uh, applying some black paint to the top, to the top of the canvas, all throughout the top. We're going to start to descend. I'm going to start to paint downwards a little bit. So basically, the whole thing is going to be getting a little lighter as I descend. I do add a couple of drops of water here and there to my mixture of paint sometimes, just to make it a little bit less thick. And you're going to see me just progressively get lighter and lighter as I paint these clouds. That's all you'll see me doing for the next few minutes. So in the meantime, as I do that, I want to always give credit where credit is due. So to the creator of Godzilla, Tomoyuki Tanaka, a big shout out, and of course also the director of Gojira, Ishiro Honda, and to the special effects team behind the suitmation, the guy behind the suit, the creator of that effect, Eiji Tsuburaya. So I didn't mention that these are actually clouds that we're painting, so I want to make it, of course, look very blurry and cloudy. And one way that I can do that is by using a dry brush. Using a dry brush allows you to blur clouds to the point that it looks natural and very soft. All it is is just a dry brush without any water to use to rub or brush up against this paint to make it a lot more soft and cloudy. So while I have your attention, I want to remind everybody to please subscribe to the channel and hit the notification button. Also like the video. This all helps our channel and it keeps you notified of our latest time lapses and our latest videos, our latest tutorials. We have tons of tutorials now. Um, we've really just begun, but we already have put out lots of tutorials based on great characters like Godzilla and great movies of all sorts. Uh, we do love our adventure movies and our classic sci-fi and horror movies, but we've put out tutorials on movies like Jaws, Jurassic Park, E.T., and also, as I mentioned, horror, Event Horizon, Alien, The Thing. So many different um, films that we create art to, and we want you to create art to with us. So please don't forget to do that before you leave. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm mixing a dark gray so that I can paint the horizon, the land that is farthest away, right before we paint the water. So I'm gonna go a little bit lighter as you can see, it's gray again, but it's somewhat lighter than that horizon it was. And I'm just going to paint from side to side, 
And these long brush strokes, just from side to side, paint the whole body of water. So now I'm actually going to change brushes. I'm going to go smaller. And now what I'm going to do is add some motion to the ocean, some, some waves, some movement in the water. And this is going to be made of just different lines that I'm going to make on the water of different shades of gray. So I'm going to start with a gray that is lighter than the water. It's lighter than the than what I painted the water with and the only rule is that the lines or the waves that are the farthest out are smaller they are tiny and as I paint the lines that are closer to let's to the camera if you will those are thicker wider and just bigger so I'm gonna use different shades as I mentioned here I'm gonna use a darker much darker almost black uh, shade to make waves, to make shadows in the water all throughout. And the same rule applies. They are smallest as they are farther away. And then as I proceed closer, then they get bigger, longer. Just um, not as, I'm not as careful as I apply them. I'm just kind of much more forceful with it. And now I'm gonna do the same thing, but with a much lighter gray. Now on to the King of Monsters himself. So I'm going to go back to the bigger brush that I was using. And here I have black paint. And I'm going to start by making an outline that ascends from the water or emerges and goes into the sky. But there's no head yet. Now I'm going to make a circle for the head or more, more like an oval, sorry for the head. And then I'm going to connect those two. So this is just an outline. There are no details yet, but I'm going to connect the head to the body. And then I'm going to paint everything inside. I'm going to fill it all in. It's going to be a very easy step for now. So now I'm going to make the head a little bit bigger and I'm going to start adding a little bit more detail to this outline. So I'm going to, as you can see with the smaller brush, I'm going to just make it more robust. I'm going to paint his hand now, his left hand. So 
So now onto the spikes. So the spikes are actually not that hard. We're gonna make four lines for these spikes. One, two, three, four lines for this first spike and four lines for this second larger or longer spike. And then the same thing for this third one. So now what I'm gonna do is kind of connect almost like in a web fashion connect those lines by webbing between them and do the same thing to all three of them so now I'm gonna add all sorts of smaller spikes between them and all around these main these three main spikes that we made so i'm going to add all sorts of smaller spikes as i mentioned all between this area all around the three main ones that we made Okay, so now I'm going to start painting some, some light that is hitting Godzilla. I'm going to use that newspaper I mentioned. I'm going to crumble it up really, really well to make a brush that will go on Godzilla and create all sorts of bumpy, uneven marks, as you'll see. I'm going to make a very light gray. It's very light, almost white, but definitely gray. And that's what I'm going to use. I learned this technique from watching street artists in Manhattan. They'll use this technique with newspaper that is crumbled up to create all sorts of terrain on planets that they paint. And it's something that you can use to dab, as I'm doing here, to dab on light that is hitting this very bumpy creature. Here I'm gonna create his arm, his forearm, as well as his elbow. I line it up with his other arm. Here is his elbow, then we go below, then here is his, right above his hip. After which we can then add some light hitting his, right underneath his neck, his chest area, and that big belly. So here I have a very small brush, you could call it a detail brush. And I'm going to use this with very very light gray once again. The same light gray that I use for all those details with the newspaper. I'm going to use that to add small amounts of light hitting his head and different areas. So to minimize the effect so that the light I add won't be that bright, I can wipe off simply using a paper towel. That will diminish the paint that is on the brush and it will be much softer. But not so much for the spikes. For the spikes, I want it to be a bright light that is hitting them. Now I'm going to add a couple of spikes that are in front of the other spikes that we added previously. I'm gonna 
add some light to his right hand now to show a little bit of a distinction between his fingers. Now for his eye, it's simply a crescent shape, a tiny little crescent or letter C. I'm gonna take a little bit of very light gray once again to add some water that is breaking as he is moving about. So even though here I'm signing it in red paint, there's actually a little bit more I wanted to do. Here I'm gonna give Godzilla a little bit of uh, tummy tuck because he's a little bit too much like me. So I'm gonna actually just trim off a little bit here. The only thing is that it has to match. The color has to match the background. So I have to add some very light gray here if I want to cut in. And hopefully you can use these tips if you ever need to fix a painting. You can always subtract. There's nothing that you, you cannot work on, basically. finish any painting, you always want to protect it and coat it with a varnish. Here I have an option of gloss or matte spray or paint on. And after that, Godzilla will be ready to wreak havoc. Thank you so much everyone, as always, I do hope that you try the painting, that you just have fun with it. Don't forget, once again, to subscribe and hit the notification button. Visit etherealartstudio.com. And while you're here, check out these other Godzilla-themed videos that we have.